Oh, sh okay, here we go. All right. Hi, everybody. Let us know in chat where you're from, what swim team you're on. Um, my name is Chloe Sutton. I am a two-time Olympic swimmer. I swam the 10K open water swim in the Beijing Olympics, and I swam the 400 freestyle in the pool Olympics, which makes me the first and only American woman to swim in both open water and pool swimming in the Olympics. Welcome, everybody. We're glad you're here. Um, I've got joining me Sierra Rungi. Sierra is a Olympic gold medalist in the 2016 Olympics, and she's also uh, finishing up her degree at, was it Arizona State? Yes, Arizona State University in um, nutrition and healthy living. So Sierra, welcome. And feel free to correct me if I butchered that. I didn't have it written in front of me this time. Let's see, Sierra, are you there? Sierra, are you there? Let me see. I'm gonna I'm gonna reset the room real quick. Give me one moment, you guys. All right, and we're back. There you are. Okay, we gotcha. All right, so I am super excited about what we're going to be cooking today. It's going to be really fun. I've also got a puppy in my lap. You might see him pop up from time to time. He will not be quiet unless he's in my lap, so <laughs> he has to be. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Sorry, I'm going to turn on the chat so I can kind of see if you what you guys are saying. Yeah, yeah. so guys, we're going to be making um, a variation of brownies. They're called black bean brownies, and they're probably one of my favorite desserts ever because I love brownies. Um, and I was telling Chloe earlier that they, you know, they're probably the closest thing that I've made that have tasted like legit brownies um, with a very limited healthy amount of ingredients, which is really exciting. So we're going to jump right, right to it, Chloe. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Cool. Um, awesome. you know, talk to us about the ingredients a little bit yeah. think, and why these alternatives are healthier um, than something, you know, that's something like a regular brownie, something with refined sugar, yeah. and all of yeah. that. So this, these brownies are super good um, because there's no flour, no processed sugar. They're dairy free and they are also gluten free. So if you guys have a gluten intolerant, dairy intolerance, um, you want to stay away from it. Pro the processed sugars. Can't get that out. Um, and flour, this is kind of your go-to dessert or a go-to uh, dessert for sure. Um, so what's in it? So we've got black beans, um, which are very, very, very high in protein, plant-based protein for all you vegetarians out there. That is good for, you know, um, black bean brownies. You can put that in your dish as your protein. Um, the U.S. Dietary Guidelines for Americans actually counts black beans as both your protein and a vegetable, um, which is really cool. Um, and they, you know, they've they've a uh, high, high, high uh, plant-based protein, so that's super good. Um, honey, we have honey in this. So honey is going to act as your sweetener, um, and this is in place as your processed sugar. Um, you want to stay away from processed sugar because it's got very little nutrient in it. Um, because the way that they break down everything in the sugars and stuff, they, they kind of wipe out all the nutrient value. And meanwhile, honey still has some nutrients. It is still, um, a sugar. So you want to kind of moderate it. You don't want to take it, you know, huge, huge quantities of it. Um, eggs, this has got a lot of eggs in it. It's got six eggs for an entire brownie pan. Whoa. Yeah. Cause that's yeah. going to act as... Um, that's going to act a lot as your, um, kind of flour base. It kind of fluffy, fluffens up and everything, um, yeah. not in the baking powder, but eggs are actually a very, 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 um, good source of protein and nutrients. It's, um, one of the most nutritious foods on the planet. Surprisingly, um, it pretty much contains a little bit of every nutrient that your body needs. Um, they're high in choline, which is good for building your cell membrane so that your brain, you know, can send signals um, along your body. So that helps, you know, with trying to be fast switch, trying to move, trying to be 
aware that helps kind of coat everything. Um, they're super good in protein. They've got huge blocks of amino acids. So amino acids are the building blocks of protein. Um, and these guys hold, I think it's six, um, six grams of the essential amino acids. Um, so that's super helpful for, you know, building muscle, losing weight, maintaining weight, um, feeling full, kind of getting up everything that you need with that optimizing bone health, you know, that's where you're going to get a lot of, um, protein, which is good for this and for swimmers because, um, it's low in calories, but high in protein. So if you guys are looking to build muscle, um, and you're having a, you know, hard practices and stuff, and you're looking to, um, replenish your body, you can have your dinner and then having these as well as kind of a backup. And this is something, you know, like with the whole, we had questions about protein powder last week. Mm -hmm. Um, that, you know, this is something that you can do for whole foods, um, to get higher levels of protein instead of taking in those, um, protein drinks. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share the recipe now so you guys can okay. look it over or um, go ahead and download it. So it's sharing. It should be in your feed here in a minute over in the files. Um, and yeah, this is, I'm really excited about this because I love brownies, but um, you know, I struggle to get enough protein in my diet. Yeah. You know, you need, it, everybody needs so much protein. Athletes right. need so much protein. I'm pregnant, so I'm supposed to get like all this protein and <laughs> it's so hard to get. So um you guys go ahead and check out the recipe i'm also yeah. excited about how this is made it seems like it's a yeah. kind of dish that doesn't really require too many um no. dishes afterwards which is yeah and that's, that's <laughs> what's super helpful i made um i made this earlier and i literally i think i used the blender and a sheet pan mm -hmm. um, and then some you know cups and tablespoons and stuff but that's the majority is happening in here and in your sheet pan and baking it um, which is super easy on you guys to clean up. If you guys are baking this, um, if you're having the help of your parents, easy, you know, for all that. Um, so yeah, it's super easy and I'm super excited to show you guys. So let's get started with baking. All right. First all right, things first, there. wash your hands. Always wash your hands before you guys start cooking, baking, touching anything. Um, and then what you're gonna guys are gonna do is you're going to set your um, oven at 350. And you're gonna let that preheat while we um, start adding stuff to the blender and keeping that going. So we're gonna start by draining black beans. Um, this comes in a liquid. You wanna make sure you use kind of a fine mesh strainer um, to get all of that gunk out um and what you're gonna do is you're gonna dump that into your strainer this is kind of off screen unless you guys want to come with me to my sink you guys are going to give that a thorough rinse you want to get all of that brown uh liquid off of your black beans so you don't want any of that because that just tastes like can that tastes more you know like the black beans so you're going to make sure that the water that runs off of it underneath is clear when you guys are done rinsing. That's when you know you guys are done rinsing. So you're gonna take your black beans. Um, you're gonna put it into your blender, give it a good dump. Um, and you're going to pulse your black beans so that they're, you're gonna try to get them as smooth as possible. That it's not gonna be you know that easy with just the black beans, but it'll smoothen out as we go. Um, so you're going to give this guy a quick pulse. I'm going to put you on mute so you don't have to listen to the blender go. Um, but you'll, you'll be able to see it, uh, as I, as I go. All right. So she's just pulsing the blender right now to get the black beans a little bit mushed up in there. I, I'm so excited about this. This is going to be really cool because, I mean, a healthy version of brownies. I mean, count me in. Somebody asked Sierra if you can yeah. use dried beans. Are you able to cook dried beans and then use them? No? Yeah, you are. So if you, you don't want to put um, cooked or dried beans into a blender because it's just going to turn into a um, more of a grain flour. Um, and this, you want to keep this liquid so that it turns into a batter because when you add everything in... Um, to wet ingredients, it comes out the consistency that you want. But if you do the, just the dried beans, it's gonna turn into um, something that's probably a little bit more chalky and a little more dense. 
Um, so if you do have just dried beans, you're going to want to have to um, rehydrate them. So you're going to stick them in some water, probably let them sit overnight, um, or you can cook them as the instructions say on the um, packaging, and that'll probably soften them up. Um, and then you can start this whole process from there. So you guys are going to want to, you know, the black beans are going to kind of look like that. They're a little mashed up, not terribly liquefied yet. So then we're going to take our eggs. So we have six eggs, um, which is insane, I know. But That's it's eggs. <laughs> but you know, it's it's hitting those all that good protein, all those good nutrients, and that you know, hitting those amino acids and getting all that protein, so you guys can build a lot of muscle and uh, replenish your muscles as you guys are training. Um, so you're gonna do all six of your eggs in one go. So that this adds like a lot of liquid. Somebody asked if there was anything that can replace eggs. Yes, there is. So if you guys are vegan um, or vegetarian, you can replace um, every one egg that you put in here. You can either do a fourth cup of bananas, a fourth cup of uh, applesauce, unsweetened applesauce, and that'll act the same as eggs. You, um, know, that's and, your stuff. Hmm? you know your stuff. <laughs> I do love my cooking and I've practiced it a couple times. <laughs> and if you guys do use sweeten, um, that was five, six. Um, if you guys do, do only have sweetened applesauce, what you'll want to do is you can use the sweetened applesauce, but you, um, we're going to take off probably two tablespoons of the honey that we're going to use just so you can um, compensate for um, the sweetness that, that's there. So we're going to go ahead. Give this guy a good blend. I'll put you guys on mute again so you don't have to. And. All right, so now she's just blending up the black beans and the eggs together. Um, and that's gonna put a lot of air into the eggs and that's gonna help make your brownies a little bit more fluffy um, since this recipe doesn't really have any flour or anything like that. So, but yeah, a lot of you guys are saying that this is going to give you, uh, like Emily said, I feel like Gaston, it's going to give you a lot of protein, help you get big muscles, um, yeah, or the female version. That's that's absolutely right. This recipe is great for athletes and to satisfy that sweet tooth that I know both Sierra and I definitely have, and I'm sure a lot more of you also have a sweet tooth too. You there? There we go. Yeah, you are. Sorry, technical difficulties. Um, okay, so what you guys are going to do is um, you're going to make sure that the consistency of your brownie kind of mix right now, it's not, I wouldn't say brownie mix, but it's it's going to look gross. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It kinda, <laughs> it's got a funky, funky look, but you see how it's kind of liquidy now? And you can yeah. see that most of the black beans are now, you know, broken down. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So I just want to put it on the stove. It's fine. You know, sometimes it happens. Um, yeah. So you're, <laughs> that's going to be fun to clean up later, guys. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of that liquid. You want, you know, want to be able to kind of do this and it's going to be on the watery side. Um, so then your next step is that you're going to take six tablespoons of butter, which is great. I love butter. Um, so you can also substitute this out for coconut oil they kind of have the same effect and they, they, you know, coconut oil has a little bit more nutrition value, not very much. Um, they're both fats um, and they both can, you know, have good and bad effects on your body. So everything, you know, fat wise in this case um, is moderation. Um, I'm going to use butter today, um, but coconut oil is always an option for you if, you know, you're vegetarian, vegan, all that stuff. So six, this is pre-melted, by the way, um, pre-melted butter, but um, you're going to want it soft to liquid. Um, and salted butter, right? Yes. I use salted butter because salt, you know, enhances the flavors like the sweetness and stuff. Um, if you have unsalted butter, just add, you know, a little bit of salt, um, not too terribly much, probably. I'd say a half a teaspoon of salt for this recipe, um, just so it doesn't get too salty and too, yeah. So... Next step, you're going to take a teaspoon, teaspoon, not tablespoon. Teaspoon is the, this is table, the big guy. This is tisp. 
Um, you're going to take a, oh, I lied. Sorry. Tablespoon of vanilla. I mixed that I one up. Tablespoon of <laughs> the big guy. Yeah. So you're going to take a tablespoon of vanilla. Vanilla is probably one of my favorite ingredients when I bake. I love like vanilla, ice cream, vanilla, like cake, vanilla frosting, that whole, oh, yeah. whole thing is very good. Okay. So this guy, you're going to give it a good pulse. Second. You guys asked, um, there were a few questions I saw. Um, how do you know how much teaspoons of butter, how many teaspoons? On the wrapper of your butter, it'll have little lines sectioned off for each teaspoon. So that should be able to tell you how much butter you need to use. Um, and let's see, what happens if you don't have salted butter? You can use unsalted and then add just a little bit of salt, like a pinch of salt, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And that was a good point. Um, Chloe, is that on the, the butter on your stick, they have markers for tablespoons. And I um, found out that a quarter a cup of, if you just have like the big blocks of butter, a quarter of a cup is four tablespoons of butter, four tablespoons of anything, you know? So you can um, base it off that depending on what type of butter you have. Um, but yeah, you're gonna wanna make sure you wanna melt that down. And if you just have unsalted butter, just salt it a little bit and you're good to go. Um, okay, next step, we're going to do honey. So honey, you're doing a half cup of honey plus two tablespoons. Um, and this is where if you guys are using sweetened, sweetened applesauce, you want to make sure you just do a single half cup. You don't want to add those extra two tablespoons because the applesauce is already sweetened. So you're going to do that guy. You're going to give it a good dump. And this is actually helpful if you guys have one of these squeegee spatulas. This is actually comes in very handy with stuff like this so that you can scrape yeah. all the, the goodness out um, of your of your half cup. So you're going to do that and then you're going to hit two tablespoons worth. You're going to put all that in there. And I always loved honey. I always try to use honey as much as I can when I bake instead of processed sugar, just because processed sugar has so much, um, you know, issues linked to it. There is, you know, the, it, if you consume too much, it can contribute to weight gain diseases, um, like, um, high blood sugar and all that stuff. So you just want to try to limit as much processed sugar, um, as you possibly can, um, and sugar in general, um, just make sure you keep that limited and in moderation. Um, which is kind of hard when you have a sweet tooth like me, but you know, you work through it. And I actually did a, um, a peanut butter cookie recipe the other night that was three ingredients, zero processed sugar. It only had maple syrup as a sweetener and it was awesome. Big fan. I'll, uh, try to get that to you guys at some point too. All right. So your honey's in here, right? You can give it a couple quick more pulses. I'm just going to go ahead and add um, the cocoa powder and the baking powder to it, um, because it's all going to blend into one in the first place. So, um, you know, I'm just going to do that all right now. So next step, you're going to do six tablespoons of cocoa powder and cocoa powder actually, because it comes from cocoa, it's got, um, components of it that are actually anti-inflammatory for your body and act as, um, you know, it, it actually works as a cleaner for your teeth and mouth too, which I thought was kind of weird considering it yeah. comes in chocolate, you know, like I was like, Oh, interesting. Um, but yeah, it's, it's actually packed full of, they're called flavanols. Um, and they're really good, um, antioxidants that are, um, good with anti-inflammatory. So that's another big bonus of this is that you don't have to worry too much about, you know, that, and it helps with, you know, anti-inflammatory. So it's building your muscles and taking inflammation down, which is like key, which I think is awesome. If I can find that in one recipe, that's always a good time. Um, final step for making the batter is this one teaspoon, smaller guy this time, one teaspoon of baking powder, sorry, two teaspoons of baking powder. And this is a bit more technical, guys, on the whole, um, you know, baking scale. Everything that you want to do. So when I take a full teaspoon, right, you want to make sure that you leaven off so that it's flat 
against your teaspoon. Whenever you bake, you want to make sure that whatever you're doing is to the top of the measuring unit because it's so um, technical with the precision and stuff. So cooking, I think, is a little bit more, you can, you know, go by taste, go by, you know, how you like it. Baking is a little bit more precise. So you just want to make sure whenever you're measuring anything with baking that it's to the level and it's very even. Um, always put it on a flat surface. If it's like a cup, put it on a flat surface, make sure it's level, then put it into your batter. So I'm going to put you guys on mute for the last time, and we're going to give this one final blend. And uh, Bogdan asked baby powder. It's not baby powder. This is baking powder. So very different. It's an important ingredient in most baking recipes. Okay, and so now she's just blending it up to get it all mixed together. If you guys have any issues, there's a reconnect button at the top, and it'll kind of refresh the webinar for you. So... Yeah, do not use baby powder. Uh, but these would be, somebody has to, why do you put baby powder in it? <laughs> no, not, no, no, no. Not baby powder. <laughs> yeah. uh, baking powder. Baking yeah. powder. <laughs> um, and I think these would be a pretty good swim meat snack. Um, I would limit the yeah. amount of that you eat. It would be something good if you're having maybe, you know, one of the rice for a, a lunch between events and a swim meet and you want to have a little bit of dessert, this would be a good option to have as a dessert at a swim meet. We expect this, uh, I don't know, this will probably go about 45 minutes. A few of you have asked how long you think this is going to be. Yeah, don't guys, this, to this one when I'm not talking takes me 15 minutes to get ready and then 45 minutes for it to put in the oven and bake. So it's, it's really not, so this might go, you know, 45 minutes, but to bake this is not terrible you know all right so your <laughs> your finished product is going to be it's going to be pretty soupy pretty watery i'm going to try not to dump it in front of the camera again because I did it before. <laughs> but if you guys you can, can see tell. it kind of looks yeah. like brownie you know it kind of looks like brownie batter now yeah um, it's maybe a little like liquidy yeah yeah you don't want to you want to make sure that there's no lumps chunks of black bean in here um just make sure it's a smooth consistency as smooth as you can possibly get it um, and then you're going to either use a nonstick pan, cake pan. I'm using an eight by eight. Um, but if you want kind of thinner brownies, you want to go with a bigger pan. If you want, uh, thicker brownies, go for a smaller pan. Um, and if you're, you know, depending on what type of pan you're using, the cook time is going to be different. So I suggest, you know, this one's going to take 40 to 45 minutes, this eight by eight. Um, but if you do something thinner, it's going to cook quicker. So probably around 30 minutes, but you want to keep an eye on it. And you can always know when it's done when you um, either stick like a fork in it, a toothpick in it, and it comes out clean, or it you touch it and it kind of springs back a little bit, but not too terribly much. Like you don't want it on your fingers when you, when you touch the top. And you want to be quick to the touch, not, you don't know, stick your hand on it. So you're going to take, you know, your nonstick pan, or you're going to line it with parchment paper. Or you can line it with um, melted butter or uh, coconut oil. Um, and that way it just doesn't stick and it's not, you know, a pain to get out. So you're just going to dump this guy straight on in. Right in. And you can squeegee out the rest of it if, to get all the goodness out. Yeah, get all that good stuff. Get all of it out, right? So it's going to look, you're going to give it a couple taps just so the air bubbles come out. But... It, this is kind of what you guys are looking for. You know, it, it looks like a brownie. Yeah. And so then you're going to put it in the oven. And remember, your oven is preheated 350. Um, and you want it to be hot when you put it. You want to hear the little timer go off when you um, finish it so that it's ready um, and preheated the oven. Okay. So okay. using some TV magic. I also, saw, I also saw a friend of mine, Abby Feldman, is here. She asked if you can use paint cooking spray to grease the pan. Yes. Yeah, you can. Yeah, anything that keeps anything from sticking is a good call um, when it comes to nonstick, um, just so that it's not, you know, a pain to get out um, and you can get to it easier and faster. <laughs> um, so using the magic of television, um, TV magic, this is the end product. Oh, no. These are the ones I made easier. Or earlier and easier. Um, so this is what the end result is, guys. You got it. So you, when I was saying it's kind of firm to the touch, but kind of springs back, that's what I was talking about. Um, 
And you know, it legitimately looks like brownies, yeah? So I actually made some icing to put on it because I'm a peanut butter cup fanatic. And I made an icing earlier that was a can of coconut milk that you put in the fridge overnight and you scoop off the white cream on the top when you open the can, leave the kind of water that's separated. Um, you add a couple tablespoons of peanut butter and some honey in it, and it tastes like peanut butter or frosting, and I'm a very big fan. Um, so do we have some time for me to make that? Because I can. Sure, I mean, we're only 20 yeah. minutes in. Yeah, would everybody like, like to see some icing made? Because I can totally do that. But what you're gonna do with the icing when, when you get it done, give it a good pour, you know? And I honestly thought when I made this, I wasn't sure how I was gonna like it because I like coconut, but it's not my utter favorite. Um, and it doesn't really have too much of a coconut flavor. It's very much prominent of peanut butter. Um, so give that, you know, your final product a good frost and you've pretty much got a peanut butter cup brownie. Um, and I didn't do this in the other one or this one, but you guys can also add chocolate chips to it, um, to your brownies. Overwhelming, yes, so, can you that recipe? You can get it. <laughs> <laughs> For the what? We're getting pretty overwhelmingly people want to have nice. the recipe too, maybe, so. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I'll put that put that up and that can get shared to you guys as well. So the peanut yeah. butter icing, all right. Good thing I prepared for that. So you're gonna wanna chill a bowl in your freezer for a little bit um, so that the coconut milk, you know, has something to keep it cool because if not, it's gonna get too runny. So you're gonna cool it in your free, uh, freezer or fridge for a good bit. Um, you're going to take your can, can of coconut milk, and you guys are going to see, on, can I get this open without, so you guys are going to see here in a second when I open this, if I can open this, sometimes you got to fight with stuff, guys. So you guys are going to see, you see like this white, it looks like a milk. You guys are gonna try to scoop that off the top after you're gonna leave this guy in the fridge for probably a night um, so that all of that kind of firms up at the top. You guys are gonna scoop off the milk at the top and it'll, you'll see the separation line. And if you um, find that it's not separating, you can um, probably leave it in the, in the fridge for a little bit longer just so that it, um, separates a little bit more. Um, but you should be able to scoop it off from the top and put it into your chilled bowl. You're gonna set that aside. Um, I have some natural peanut butter that is literally just peanuts ground up um, with some you know, natural oil and salt that they put in. So if you guys are buying peanut butter, you wanna try to look for the natural, the most natural because it has the least amount of added sugars. Um, and that's the sneaky part about processed sugars is that they try to add them in a lot of things um, to make them taste sweeter and better. So if you guys have natural peanut butter, that's great. If you don't, totally okay. But if you have the um, like Jif, something that has stuff added to it, just take it easy on the, the honey because it'll already be sweet when you um, add it. So you're gonna take you know a good, good chunk. Well, I'd say probably depending on your peanut butter love, um, I'd say probably two to three tablespoons of peanut butter. Um, I love peanut butter, so I'm gonna go three. Um, <laughs> and you're going to, this is kind of tricky. I have a hand blender, but you can use, your parents will probably have one. Um, it's like a cake batter whisk. So this is just my version of it. And it has a whisk, but you'll see the ones with the two prongs in it. You know, you, uh, You've probably seen your, your parents use it before, but you're gonna want an electronic whisk because whisking this by hand might be a pain. So you're gonna set this in, you're gonna, I like to chunk, chunk up the, the peanut butter a little bit so it doesn't, you know, get in wads. So you're just gonna press it down a little bit in your bowl and then you're gonna start the, uh, the whisking process. And this earlier went all over the place and all over my kitchen and all over me. So I'm gonna be careful. I recommend a bigger bowl too than what I'm using. Um, and you're just gonna you're gonna whisk this until the peanut butter and the coconut milk combine, 
and become kind of frothy and have um, a a more um, fluffy consist consistency than when you originally put it in. Also, guys, another tidbit um, to do this is if you tilt the bowl up so it creates kind of a well and put your mixer so that the splashing goes towards the top of the bowl, you might save your kitchen from a mess of cleanup like I did earlier. Um, but I'm going to put you guys on mute for a second or me on mute so that um, you don't have to listen to me whisk, it, whisk this for a little bit. So because this is a peanut butter icing recipe, um, I don't think there's really much that you can substitute uh, in a peanut butter, you know, when it's the main ingredient. You can probably try Nutella or, um, you know, otherwise I would just try to find maybe a vanilla icing recipe or a chocolate icing recipe that might be able to be substituted. So we have some people asking about substituting peanut butter. I mean, it's a peanut yeah. butter icing recipe, but you can pretty much use anything, right? Honestly, yeah, as long as the coconut milk, the, the coconut milk is going to be your base, and that's the main, um, pretty much the main ingredient that comes with um, this icing is, like, icing. You can put um, Nutella, you could do almond butter, you could do, you know, you could do coconut flavor, you could try vanilla, you could, you know, there's, there's a lot of room to play around with this, I think. As long as you're using the coconut milk as your base, um, you should be pretty much good to go on the... On the different types. I would love a Nutella one. Um, or, you know, and that you got to also be careful because that has, that has a good amount of, of sugar mm -hmm. in it and, and stuff. So, you know, everything in moderation. It's not like you're not allowed to have it, but um, just be mindful of how much sugar you're you're putting in and all that stuff. So I'm going to add the, the little bit of honey. I'd say probably a tablespoon, um, depending on what type of peanut butter you're using. You might do more, you might do less. Um, and you can also adjust the sweetness scale based on how you feel and how you like it. Um, but it all really depends on if you're using sweetened peanut butter, take less of the honey. Um, and uh, just so you're not, you know, overkilling it. And you got to think with the brownies too, it's going to be, it's going to play on each other. So um, you're going to give that one final whisk. So Sierra told me this is a really good brownie recipe, even without the icing. Uh, we wanted to. We weren't sure exactly how long it would take her to make it, so we weren't sure if we were going to have her make the icing or not. Um, but since we've got some time, I thought it would be good to share. Um, and we will be putting up the recipe and the video of this recipe on fitterandfaster.com slash replays. Every single uh, Fitter and Faster Live broadcast that we do goes up afterwards on fitterandfaster.com slash replays. So you guys can find everything there, including the recipes, including the workouts that you do with Lean Summers. Um, they can all be found on our website. I'll, I'll have oh, Sierra. Yeah. I'll have Sierra send me the recipe for the icing, and I'll make sure to put that on our website yes. too. You guys, since you're here, your um, you will be emailed to this email address that you used to register for the webinar. You will be emailed the link to the page where I will put all of the recipes, so you can make this yourself. And I will be making this recipe within the next couple of days as well, as soon as I can get my husband to go on a little outing <laughs> to the grocery store for me. I just have to do a little happy dance because it tastes so good. You got to do that. You ever just, you gotta, oh, yeah. You got to just kind of do a little shimmy because it tastes so good. Um, so, you guys, it's going to kind of look, this is smaller batch because I did half a batch, but this is it. You know, it's going to be on the liquidy, liquidy side. Um, so, what you're going to do is you're going to cover it with saran wrap, a plate, you know, something to cover it so it doesn't um, get icky on top. Um, and you're going to chill it for probably a couple of hours so it firms up a little bit. And then, you know, as soon as the brownies come out, let them chill, slap this on top, and you're pretty much good to go on that guy. Um, and then that's, you know, that's the co cool part about this is that it's so stinking easy to do, and it's it tastes really good. Um, I'm going to do it with the peanut butter, peanut butter frosting, because I have not tried it with that yet, and I'm very excited about it. So let me, let me, let me show you guys what we're dealing with. All right. uh, somebody asked how big is the can of black beans. I think it's just the typical black yeah, beans. Yeah, it's just, you can, you can find it at any grocery store. You'll find that in the can. Hmm? Is it 
think 15 ounces is a typical black bean can. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know what I did with the can. Yeah, it's it's just your typical um, 15 ounce can of beans. Um, you can find it in any grocery store um, in the canned food section. Um, honey is typically found, you know, with either the baked goods or like the PB and J section. Um, and then like the baking powder, cocoa powder, vanilla. That's all in the baking section of your your grocery store. And it, it, you know, it's all it's all there um, and pretty simple and easy to find. So. Um, yeah, just keep an eye out. If you look at the little things hanging above the aisle, um, you can ask your parents, you know, where where to find this stuff. But baking aisle, I'd say, canned food, PB and jelly aisle, and you'll find some honey. So pretty easy to find all the ingredients, and then voila. That's your little, you know, that's your, I'm going to pour some more of the peanut butter stuff on it because it's so good. Um, but yeah, guys, this is super healthy, super easy. Um, there's no knives involved, you know, there's, you just keep it, keep it eye on the oven when you're baking it and you're pretty much good to go, but. Um, and not that many dishes. <laughs> so good. And so I could pound this entire pan to be completely honest with you. Um, you get a lot of protein. For those of you, yeah, it is a lot of protein. Um, and it's, you know, it's, I think one quote unquote slice um, I looked at the nutrition stats and it was like eight grams of protein per slice, wow. which is really high and really good because you have all those eggs, all those beans. Um, and there's very little, little added sugar. Um, and even that sugar is naturally occurring. So it's really, really good. And, uh, we'll hit that sweet tooth for sure. Awesome. So if anybody has any questions, I am more than open, but we're pretty much done. Um, other than me cleaning up and which even that won't take that long. Which is nice. Does anybody have any more questions for Sierra about anything nutrition or related to this recipe? Please feel yeah. free to ask. You can also reach out to both of us on social media. Yeah, Sierra, are you okay with that? Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And if you guys make this, please, please, please tag me in it because I'd love to see, too. you know, the success that you guys have and, and everything. Um, you can't really taste the black beans, to be completely honest. Um, it just tastes like a brownie to me. And this and I love it. chocolate chips in it. Somebody's asking over and over how many. Yeah, the chocolate chips. You can probably, you know, it's two tastes. Um, I'd say probably a half a cup to a cup, depending on how much you're making. Um, but you honestly don't need it that much. But, I mean, if you're a chocolate lover like me, you can totally add that. Yeah. Ooh, uh, who said 6'4"? Somebody got it right. Yeah. Somebody asked how tall I was that I just saw. It just flashed. I was like, oh, all right, cool. What are your thoughts on Gatorade or um, other sports drinks? I think they're really good for when you um, are needing them. So if you're if you're looking for that electrolyte hit, um, you know that that uh, help for after working out. Um, I think they're really good or during the workout. But I I think that water is your best friend out of the pool um, for hydration sake. So I would limit the amount of Gatorade just because it has some sugars in it. Um, but most of the time when you're training, those sugars are good and it helps your body. Um, but you know, everything in moderation and keep it, um, keep it limited. But yeah, I think they're, they're not too, too bad for you. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I needed the little bit of extra calories during. Yeah. So. And especially if you're putting in, like, depending on how much work you're putting in, you know, you, you, you can up it if you are, you know, more distance oriented maybe moderate it a little bit more if you're not um and kind of go go from there um Sarah, when you're storing the brownies for later in the yeah. um, should you refrigerate it yeah i would refrigerate it. i'd cover it with saran wrap um or tin foil um and i would keep them in the uh fridge probably not for very long just because they're going to go very fast um they in my house they they're gone and a lot of it to me, but they're gone in, you know, a couple of days. So, um, but yeah, the fridge is probably the best place to store these. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Do you see any other questions you want to answer? Let me see. Uh, Coco uh, coconut oil isn't necessarily un unhealthy, but it is high in, um, in the saturated fat department. Um, and that's why I say in moderation, you want to consume, um, you know, butter, coconut oil in 
moderation because it has those um, fats in it. Um, so it's not off limits, but you want to, it's like sugars, you want to keep it moderated. And somebody keeps asking, is it good? And I would say, based yes. on your it's very <laughs> I good. I love it. it um, it's one of my favorite desserts. And is this good, would you say, for somebody maybe that has some diabetes? Yeah, because it's lower in sugar. Um, it's lower in sugar. And if you, I would recommend with that, maybe keeping the, the um, honey lower um in that case maybe use some of the sweetened applesauce or, or something like that um just so lower the amount of sugar that you're consuming um but this is actually pretty good at stabilizing your blood sugars um which is really cool i think i read that um black beans help with that um and it keeps you know everything regulates and hold on let me see if i can pull that up real quick because that was that was one of the big things that I read. Um, that was, I think it's eggs. Eggs help with blood, you know, blood sugar, cocoa powder, everything in this kind of helps with your blood sugar regulation, which is really good. Um, and so that would help with a, somebody that with diabetes. Um, but if you do have diabetes, I recommend that you try to stay away from processed sugars as much as you can. Awesome. Um, so guys, like I said, I'm going to make sure that when you're emailed the replay of this, or you can visit fitterandfaster.com slash replays, probably in about an hour, it'll take me a minute to upload everything. Um, but you can find the recipe for both the brownies. I'm also going to get the icing recipe from Sierra and I'll put it there as well. And the video of this, so you can see exactly how to make this recipe. Um, please tag us, especially yes. Sierra and Fitter and Faster Swim Tour. Please tag us if you guys make the brownies and let us know what you think. Um, we will be doing a part three next week. Sierra will yeah. be at you with another recipe um, that she'll be showing us. And we're also working on, and this is just kind of starting, Sierra and I had a conference call this morning about it. We are working on a whole nutrition and cooking class um, with small groups to um, let Sierra be able to watch you cook, make sure you're, you're doing it correctly and cook things along with you. Um, so we're really, really excited about that. Yeah, um, yeah. So continue to let us know on social media what you guys are liking, what you want to see more of. I know I'm really enjoying these cooking classes. I've made the turkey skillet last week, and I'm going to go try to make these brownies here in a minute, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you guys see the puppy real quick. He is very sleepy. Oh, He's a very tired little boy. Very oh, oh. tired. But we'll see you guys next week, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Tune in next week, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.